flamingos. One of nature's greatest and most unique creations. These pink dinosaurs have existed in the fossil record for over 30 million years. As humankind evolved, reverence for these coral-colored water birds was reflected throughout the centuries in painting, fashion, and sculpture. Then, in the early years of the 21st century, in a small town in what was once known as North Carolina, a visionary woman took it upon herself to honor these noble creatures in her own special way. She was to open the world's first and only plastic flamingo petting zoo. This jewel of the eastern seaboard was a center of joy and happiness for many years, until, sadly, on November 14th, 2020, this rosy oasis was closed forever. Pilgrims continued to make their way to the petting zoo, only to arrive and find it devoid of any of its former glory. One very disappointed traveler was to express their profound delusion in the poetic and eternal words, pink building, but no flamingos. Now, in the year 2287, in the wastes of the Commonwealth, another woman with the same entrepreneurial drive and personal passion for the synthetic phenicopteri has brought the zoo back into existence as a place where everyone can come and visit and, at least for a short while, forget all about the horrors of surviving in the wasteland. Well, hi there, and welcome to the Plastic Flamingo Petting Zoo. My name is Rosetta Stone, but you can call me Rosie if you like. I'm just so super proud to be the creator and proprietor of this zoo. Ever since I was a small child, I've just been crazy about pink flamingos. I mean, is there anything more adorable than a pink flamingo? Doesn't it just make you think about how things must have been before the war? A time when placing something like that in your front yard was a fun little decoration, instead of now when we have to decorate the perimeter of our homes with turrets and razor wire. Oh, it really must have been an amazing time to be alive. Anyway, you're here for the tour, right? Well, then, let me show you around. I'm sure by the end, you're going to love these little guys just about as much as I do. So right here at the beginning, we've got our information center, so all the visitors that grace us with their time can learn all about these very special birds. Wow. Now I've tried to make things as comfortable as possible because heaven knows life around here is uncomfortable enough and I would really like to provide a little oasis from all of that with my modest creation here. As you probably already know, admission to the zoo is absolutely free. However, I do need some amount of funds to support my continued research and maintenance of the zoo itself. To that end, I have a few ways that I can raise some caps, and here are a couple of my favorites. First, there's the Lady Flamingo Silk Organza Dress. And right next to that is a set of the zoo's official power armor. I hand make each piece, and I can guarantee the quality of the clothing and the durability of the armor. Yeah. Well then, next I'm going to show you the heart of the learning center here, where I have a large assortment of holotapes that I've made over the years. 
each one a thesis on some aspect of flamingo history, biology, nutritional requirements, migration patterns, and so much more. It's literally taken years of work, but thankfully the library in downtown Boston still has a lot of research materials available. If you're looking for information on how to create an explosive, well, you're not going to find any of that. That kind of stuff got stolen a long time ago. But it's funny, nobody ever took any of the books about flamingos. <laughs> Can you imagine? How lucky am I? I was also very lucky to have gotten my hands on these Radiation King monitors. They still function like they're brand new. Here, let me show you how they work. Welcome to a very brief history of the plastic flamingo. Ah, the plastic flamingo, icon of a bygone era. But even today, this plastic fantastic creature still holds its iconic status for many in the commonwealth. But where did they come from? Why were they created in the first place? And who is responsible for their classic appearance? To answer these questions, we must go back to the year 1957, and to the hamlet of Lemster, Massachusetts, just outside the celebrated city of Boston. In that fateful year, a young artist by the name of Don Featherstone was hired by the plastics molding company, Union Products, to design a series of lawn decorations. And it was his design of a flamingo that was to change the appearance of American front lawns for decades to come. From the time of their inception to the mid 21st century, over 20 million plastic flamingos were created and sold, bringing joy to all who were fortunate enough to have one or more in their yard. Then, in the year 2077, the nuclear holocaust of the Great War almost brought an end to humanity but did in fact, bring an end to the creation of plastic flamingos. Today, those that were not melted in the initial blasts, are sought out by collectors, and people of good taste, across what is left of the continent. And thanks to the efforts of places like the marvelous Plastic Flamingo Petting Zoo in Malden, Massachusetts, these paradigmatic plastic feathered friends of days gone by, will always be safe from extinction and treasured for generations to come. Wow! <laughs> I must have seen that a million times and it just never gets old. Moving on, let me show you over to our concession stand and mini cafe. All proceeds from the sales of snack items go to help support the zoo. But if you're hungry and don't have any caps, don't worry. Just let me know and I'll fix you up something nice to eat. I mean, my daddy left me more fancy lad snack cakes than I'll ever know what to do with. You're one of those little uh, fancy lads, aren't you? So if somebody needs one, I'm more than happy to share. I've got to say, you picked the perfect day for a visit. The zoo is very popular with families, especially those with small children. But right now it's so, it's so nice and quiet. Now before we go see the birds, let me just show you upstairs real quick. And in case you need it, I've got a very nice restroom facility, but also up here is where I manage the headquarters of SOFA. SOFA stands for the Society of Flamingo Aficionados, a nonprofit organization I started back when I was a teenager. It started off small, of course, but since opening the petting zoo, membership has exploded. Like, I think there must be 12 or 13 people now that have joined. And <laughs> let me tell you, when we have our annual meeting, it gets all kinds of crazy in here. <laughs> Oh yes, before I forget, I wanted to show you the facilities, and they're right back here. And yeah, we have the old men's and women's signs up here, but that's just for nostalgia's sake. 
This is an everybody bathroom. It doesn't matter what kind of human you are. Really, it doesn't even matter if you are human. When nature calls, you can't really put her on hold. You know what I mean? <laughs> so out here, I've made a little washing up area. And in here, we have the loo, or the toilet, or the water, whatever you'd like to call it. I also make my own toilet paper from recycled books that have been burned beyond usefulness. But I also have several newspapers that can be used by those that are more accustomed to that type of uh, paper for tidying up the downstairs. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to get a bidet put in, but our regular plumber was eaten by a pack of mutant hounds, so that's been delayed. <laughs> Well, I think that's about it for here in the building. I think I've shown you just about everything, so after the tour, you can just make yourself at home here. Okay, let me just close this all back up and we can get on to the main attraction. <gasps> so exciting! I can't wait to show you. Really, I have always been such a flamingo head. My poor parents must have thought I was off my rocker when I was little. They would send me out to forage for food or clothing, and nine times out of ten, I'd come back with an arm full of plastic flamingos. <laughs> oh, but with time, however, I learned to come back with flamingos and food, and my parents learned to accept my obsession and really began to support my ambitions. They even went so far as to find this place and clear it out for me so I could achieve my dream of building my petting zoo. I don't think they ever fully understood my dream, but they were great parents and so supportive of me no matter what. Ugh, oh, such a shame about that sinkhole. It just sucked them away one day. Hm. But enough sentimentality. Onward to the holding pen. Oh, I do hope you're ready for the treat of a lifetime. Oh, just look at them all. Oh, my babies. And they seem like they're in a pretty good mood right now. Calm and ready for visitors. Oh, it can get quite noisy around here at times. Especially in the spring when the mating season is setting in. They go completely bonkers. Ah, and if you're here later around feeding time, you can help me give them their dinner if you'd like that. During my rescue missions a while back, I was at the Suffolk County Schoolhouse and I found these plates of food. We'll call it food. At any rate, this food is not only high in proteins and vitamins, but auspiciously super high in carotenoids. In case you don't know, carotenoids are a natural pigment found in many plants, bacteria, algae, and even fungi. Before the war, flamingos would eat shrimp and algae that contained a lot of these pigments and would then turn pink themselves. Now, though, I have this easy-to-serve paste that keeps all my little babies pink as pink can be. Well, let's go introduce you to the crew, then. Each one has their own name and their own distinct personality. Like Herbert here. Oh, what a cuddle bunny he is. He just loves head scritches and nice hugs when he can get them. Then there's Doris here and Nigel and... Oh, gosh, there are so many. I can't possibly introduce them all. But how about I just tell you about my favorites? Like, oh my, yes, these two here. They came in together, and it was just love between them ever since. They've been beak to beak for what seems like forever. And who else? Let's see. Ah, yes, Jeffrey. Uh, he's a bit of a fussy eater, that one. <laughs> Then there's this group of siblings, Cody, Karen, Carter, Kyle, and Carlotta. It's nice when you can keep a family of flamingos all together. I think it really does wonders for their overall well-being. 
And over here, well, this group is a bit of a handful, let me tell you. <laughs> Not really troublemakers, but they will always be the first to jump in if there's a scuffle of any kind. Yes, I'm looking at you, Reggie, you bad boy. <laughs> oh, then there's the shy corner. These guys can be a bit timid and easily frightened, but just walk calmly and they should be fine. Toward the end here, we've got the overachievers. Always the best behaved and smartest of the bunch. Oh, but look at them all. They're all good birds, aren't you? Aren't you all my good little birds? No matter their temperament, each one brings me such joy. Now the pen here is where I keep the young adult birds because they need a little bit more special care. As they age and mature, I can let them out to the free range area where they're still cared for on a daily basis, but don't need that much of a super duper close eye kept on them. I just put out some food and they don't need much coaxing to stay close by. In fact, it's almost like they never move. <laughs> yes, I've yet to have even one of my beloved birds fly away. So I would think they must be happy here. Oh, I do hope so. Well, I suppose that just about wraps up the tour. Oh, and don't forget, you can purchase either the dress or the power armor at any time. It doesn't have to be today. So I'll just walk you back to the pickup point. And, uh, oh, yes, that, <laughs> that's the nursery. Where they, uh, oh, <clears throat> oops, <laughs> there goes another volunteer. <laughs> Those baby flamingos can be brutal. But anyway, I hope you've had a wonderful time here today. And if you'd ever like to volunteer, I, I think we have an opening. <laughs> Well then, my dear, you take care, and I hope to see you again real soon. Flamingos forever. Goodbye.